An absolutely brutal day on the crypto battlefront with blood red seen across the charts. Bitcoin down, ETH down, SOL down, DOT down, BNB down, everything is down. What is causing this and what am I doing in this situation? Stick around to find out. G'day crypto goers, I'm Adam Stokes. Welcome back to the channel where a free and easy way of supporting this work is by simply hitting that like button, subscribing if you're new, ensuring you hit that notification bell so you never miss a new episode. Also watch out for the bots. I will never ask you to contact me via Telegram or WhatsApp. They are scammers. Stay away. Right, looking at the heat map. Jeez, we haven't seen this for a while, particularly noting that we should be shooting up to the moon at the moment. This is crypto and what an exciting time to be alive. Don't panic, my crypto brothers and sisters. Don't get so bogged down in the weeds of price and don't worry about these so-called flash crashes where olden day people are using olden day paradigms in the new digital space. You have to keep in mind that a 10% swing in a day, it's normal. Now, we don't like it dropping like this because it makes us uh, get very nervous with what's happening with our investments. But of course, today is a day to buy. If you are in this for the long run, if you still believe in crypto, the fundamentals have not changed. And I've been fishing around for the last few hours trying to find what has caused this. And there's real no fundamental reason for this happening other than one little article from, I believe it was over at Coindesk, I'll bring it up just here. Bitcoin and Ether lose grounds as Twitter CFO rules out crypto investment dollar index hits a 16 month high. So that was the only one that had any real significance that could spook the market where the Twitter CFO says he's not going to buy crypto assets. Now, this was interesting to me because I was listening to Tim Cook, CEO of Apple speak recently, and you probably heard that he has invested himself in Bitcoin a bit, but he hasn't put Apple's assets, their cash balance into crypto. And it was quite interesting what he said. He said, because we, we're not investing or Apple's not investing in crypto because Apple's stockholders don't see Apple as a company that should be buying those assets, those digital assets. And I actually thought that was quite a reasonable response. That is, if you're an Apple investor and you believe in Apple hardware or maybe iTunes or whatever they're doing in the background, even Apple Pay, Part of your investment strategy with investing into that company may not be investing into crypto. If you want to invest in a company who is investing in crypto, if you can't get an ETF, you go to somewhere like MicroStrategy and give them your money. And they would be, of course, openly and transparently investing it into Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, well, primarily Bitcoin. So although we know that Twitter was, um, they released that they're going to incorporate uh, crypto into their payment or tipping system on the Twitter platform, which was huge news. That didn't move the market at all. But maybe when this comes in, you just see the pattern over and over again. Whenever any little bad news comes out, it really spooks the market. But when big news comes out, that should be good, you know, like El Salvador adopting it as a currency, that doesn't really seem to do much at all. So I, I can't really see any other good reason except for whales doing their thing in the background. But a 10% drop isn't, it's not catastrophic. It's crypto. We've seen this before. So let's check out who are the biggest losers for today. First of all, we'll check out the charts with Bitcoin at one, Ethereum at two, Binance coin at three. Tether coin, as expected, has gone up the charts, flipping Solana. And the reason why we see uh, stable coins go up in a time like this is because many people sell out of their positions into the safe haven that is a stable coin. So this is, and you can see this also with USD coin going up into position nine. That is a very natural event where people pull out of the markets, out of the crypto, uh, vol the volatility of the crypto markets, still kind of staying in the crypto markets going to a stable coin. But because the stable coin is pegged to a US dollar or the US dollar rather, it's a almost like they're coming out of the markets without taking all of their money out of the crypto casino, if you want to look at it that way. But what's exciting is that we can see over the last hour, we have a, a good line of support. Uh, these coins are sort of gathering themselves and starting to say, well, you know what, we've tested the market at the top. We're now testing it at the bottom. If there is such a term of looking at a market dropping so suddenly, and now we can see 
the market is rallying just a little bit. And I'll show, illustrate this on the chart here. So you're looking at the Bitcoin chart, one hour candles, and you can see down here, we're starting to form a couple of green candles. I'd like to see a third one form. And if I actually drop that down, I'm even going to go micro here. I'm going to go down to five minutes. You can see that in the last hour, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So in the last hour, we can see most certainly a, a trend going straight up with confirmation, much uh, lower highs and higher highs in that last hour. It's always difficult to do technical analysis in the crypto markets when you've got so many different time scales. When, when you go and day trade or swing trade in the traditional markets, time scales become a little bit easier in the sense that markets open and close. They open at nine o'clock in the morning and sort of close at 4.30 or five in the afternoon, depending which exchange you're operating on. And then that's it. The market's closed but when you're trading in these markets it's 24 7 365 but it's kind of fourth dimensional in the sense that you've got different people waking up at different times some people are trading at night in one side of the hem uh, one side of the world others are trading in the morning at other side of the world markets are waking up at different times and they're moving at different times and there's different money in those markets and in those time sectors you do start to pick up patterns but what i want you to consider is that even though right now at time of recording, it's uh, 10.20 at night in Australia. If we look at LA, for example, it, it's like one or two o'clock in the morning. But now we've got the Asian markets also moving into night. But some of the night traders who do all their trading at night, it, it's just very dynamic in these markets. And I'm just happy to see that we've got a, a little bit of recovery coming up here. We tested a bottom and now, now she's starting to climb a little bit there. But going over to CoinGecko again, we can see that Bitcoin is currently at $60,076, dropping 8.7% in the last 24 hours, Ethereum down 10%, and Binance coin down 8.8%. But let's look at the glass half full for a second. Who made some big gains over the last 24 hours? Because remember, there are still opportunities to make a lot of money in these markets over the last 24 hours. Now, what's interesting here is I'm, I'm looking at CoinGecko, and if you've been with my channel for a while, you know I talk about your data diet. That is don't get all your information from one platform. Because what we can see here is that in the last 24 hours, Leo token is the biggest gainer at 5.4%. Well, in fact, the biggest gainer I've seen is Power Ledger. Power Ledger went up nearly 100% in 24 hours. And I only just recently did a video on Power Ledger where I interviewed the um, CEO and lead cryptographer. And clearly that interview that I did has pumped that coin. No, just kidding. But the, the truth is that on the charts that I'm looking at the moment, which is CoinGecko, and the biggest movers in the last 24 hours, they're not even listed here. So this is just yet another example of you cannot rely on any single data set, and even more so when you're looking at news data sets. If people are reporting on something in the news, you've really got to try and find the opposite of it. Find your good news story and then literally search for the opposite of that story, and then you've got two extremes and you can sort of dial it back from there. But as we can see in this data, the biggest mover is Leo token. But to check our work, let's go over to Nomics to get our data diet. The current rankings are looking pretty consistent here with Bitcoin 1, Ethereum 2, Binance 3, Tether 4 and Solana 5. But then we can see further down, you've got Hex listed at position 11, where on the other charts, it's not even in the top 100. So there is no single source of truth. Not when it comes to news, not when it comes to price performance, but at the end of the day, what really does speak volumes is what's happening in your wallets. You can see the value or, of course, the quantity of the coins in your wallets doesn't change, but the value of what you can sell it at on the market, that does change. Remember, I was talking to one of my students the other day and they're like, well, I've made so many profits, what should I do? And it's like, well you've got to consider your tax and they're like well these coins are losing and i don't want to give you tax advice because i'm not a financial advisor i'm not a tax accountant i advise the only tax advice i give you is get a good accountant and work with them closely and be honest in everything that you do but if you work with your accountant and talk about offsetting some of your profits with some of your losses that may be a move that you could discuss with your accountant so in this instance in this instance today if you know you've got a big tax bill Again, I'm not suggesting you should do this or could do this, just that you should speak to your accountant about it. I have heard through the grapevine that some people consider selling some of their assets at a loss to offset their their gainers. Now, 
Of course, why would you sell at a loss if it's going to recover? Well, sometimes they don't recover. And even if you do think it's going to recover, you might, if you're looking at it as a crypto battlefront, you might want to sacrifice some pawns to bolster up some tax credits. So when the tax man comes for you at the end of the financial year, you can say, well, I lost on these coins, but I gained on these coins. Some may be considered as a credit. Some of those losses, that is, may be considered as a credit, and that may offset some of your wins. Again, I'm not suggesting you should do that. Rather, that you should speak to your accountant about how how the rich use losses to their advantages to their advantage. And you can even see that with negatively geared properties. When you buy a property and you're paying interest only on that property and you're losing money every year by buying that property, that is an example of a offset on your tax. And there are avenues for doing that in crypto. And sometimes on red days, it provides you an opportunity if you want to liquidate assets to get some of those losses. Keep in mind though, when you, you only incur, now I'm only talking about in Australia, you only incur a tax debt or credit when you when you sell the product. It's not when, if you just buy it and hold it, then there's no realized gain. Now, of course, the big scary thing that's happening in America is they're talking about taxing the rich or even the, they don't even realize it's just the medium class as well by taxing unrealized gains. So imagine you had uh, one Bitcoin today and you didn't sell that Bitcoin, but over the financial year it doubled in price, you'd suddenly have to pay tax on something that you haven't liquidated. And what's very scary is that they'll think about doing it on property. So imagine you have a house, that house goes up in value, you don't sell the house, you're just living in the house and then suddenly, because your house has gone up $100,000 over the year, you get a tax bill for $50,000 as an example, if they want 50% um, tax on 100% of $100,000 of your capital gain. Now what's nuts about this law is first of all all these people have to come up with this money that they haven't liquidated that they don't have but it's just another example of an invisible tax because if a government like the united states is constantly printing money well that's diluting everyone's assets in this in a nominal amount so you're holding a house and the house is say your house is worth a million dollars and suddenly the government prints 30 percent more um, circulating supply, which is what they did over the last 18 months. So keeping all things consistent, your property has now gone up in a nominal amount by 30%. Now you haven't sold that house and in real value, it hasn't gone up, but because they've printed so much money going into the economy, you now have to give the government who's just diluted all of your capital assets and liquid assets, you've got to give them more money for something that you haven't even sold. So this is just absolutely crazy. And another reason why people are exiting out of traditional markets, fiat markets, even property markets and bond markets, which are giving negative yields and coming into the crypto markets, which is even more suspicion or even more confusion as to why today is a red day. There's, there is no reason for this to be happening. There has been no crack in the code. The fundamentals haven't changed. No one's banned it. Uh, China's already done its banning. I think they're up to their eight times. There was no extra ban today, so that shouldn't have spooked the markets. India's already done, what is India up to now? I think six bans of uh, crypto. They haven't re-banned it today, so there's no reason for that to be happening. There's no reason why this should be happening other than likely the whales giving one last push on the markets to squeeze you, the battler, out of this crypto space so they can scoop up your holdings and get even richer than they are at the moment. So what am I doing? Well, like you, I've got three choices. I can sell, I can buy, or I can do nothing. I'm not selling, and I've discussed the reasons why you may consider selling, unless you're a chump and they just like to buy the top and then sell the bottom. You just, you just see it over and over again. They come running to me and say, Adam, I see crypto's pumping and they buy, buy, buy. And I'm like, well, you know, just, just wait. There's very few occasions that you want to buy the top. Um, but I've seen it over and over again, as I'm sure you have as well, my crypto brothers and sisters. The normies come running in when they're at the top. They see a, an 8 to 10% pullback. They think, oh my God, the world is falling down. So then they sell, which allows people like me to, to buy cheap Bitcoin. And then they later come back in when it pumps again at the top and they sell the bottom. They buy the top, sell the bottom, buy the top, sell the bottom. You generally want to do the complete opposite of that. Unless you're shorting the market, which is then you do want to buy the top 
and sell the bottom, noting that you've already shorted it. So anyway, I put in some orders today. When it dumped quickly, I scooped up that bottom and I actually broke my holdings into thirds. I bought the immediate dump, then I put some market orders in below the dump and all of those orders have been filled. And then I, I put in a third amount of orders, even lower again. But I don't actually think I'm going to see that third round of orders filled because it looks like we're getting a bit of support as we hit that low mark of about 59.9 thousand US dollars uh, and about 83.2 thousand Australian dollars. Looking at the candles form as we speak, look, we're getting another green candle. These are five minute candles, so don't get too excited. But we're certainly getting a, a a nice ascending wedge there. It's quite aggressively ascending as perhaps the whales are coming in right now and scooping up all the plankton's dumping of their crypto, which I hope you did not do. Anyway, I just wanted to get into the crypto land to share with you, my crypto brothers and sisters, what I'm doing. Hopefully reassure you if you're panicking, don't panic sell. Think of the long game. Don't get distracted by the noise of the markets. Remember, this is crypto. We did get resistance or rather support as we hit that bottom. We are coming back again now, but in the big picture, you should really be focusing on dollar cost averaging. Unless you are a professional trader, don't try and play the game of swing trading. Don't try and do the day trading. For the love of crypto gods, do not get into margin trading unless you really know what you're doing and you've got a massive appetite for risk. Just play the long game. Every week, every fortnight, every month, put in a few expendable bucks and then do nothing. If you get too distracted by what's happening here, you're going to panic sell and make a really foolish move. We need to be very cognizant of these markets over the next, I would say, 48 to 72 hours to see what's actually happening. But noting that nothing is lining up for why this should be dumping, my assumption is the whales are scooping up the chumps crypto. But let me know what you're doing in the comments below. Did you panic sell? Did you buy the dip? Are you doing nothing? Or is there something else that you've got up your sleeve? You're part of the community and we value your input. I'm Adam Stokes. Thanks for listening. Happy investing. And I'll talk to you next time.